The problems for my videos can be downloaded from my website, tonybell.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link. You'll see there's no sign in, no sign up, nothing like that. Just a hundred plus pages of accounting exercises. Many of the exercises are free and open, about 40%. And if you're working through those and finding you're getting great value out of them, you might consider joining and getting a channel membership that has access to the other 60% of the videos. All right, let's jump into today's exercise. Let's take a look at problem 61A. Charming Clothiers manufactures neckties. The company has the following information. The company's sales price is $30 a unit. The variable cost of producing the neckties is $18 a unit. The company expects to have fixed costs of $60,000 next year, and the company expects to sell 8,000 neckties next year. Assume no taxes. So before I jump into any of the ABCD stuff that are required here, when I get a CVP problem, I always want to lay it out my own way. I always want to lasso the information and organize it. And here's how I'd encourage you to organize it. This is an optional step, but I think it's a useful one. So I start by constructing an income statement and I'm going to do sales, variable expenses, sales minus variable expenses is contribution margin as we will learn this chapter or have learned in the intro video to the chapter, uh, minus fixed expenses equals our operating income. And if we had taxes, we would take away taxes to get net income, but there's no taxes in this one. And I do sort of a three section uh, income statement. The first section is per unit. So I want to know sales per unit, variable cost per unit. Then I do total and then I do percentages. So let's see if we can lasso this information into this form. Uh, so my sales per unit is $30. My variable expenses per unit, $18. And the CM, the contribution margin per unit is 12. In total, this person expects to sell 8,000 units. So I'll just put 8,000, oops, 8,000 units at the top here. And 30 times 8,000, I guess that's 240,000. 30 times 8,000, yeah, $240,000. Our variable expenses, $18 per unit. And again, we're going to sell 8,000, so $144,000. Our CM, 12 times 8,000, that's $96,000. Now you'll notice I didn't do fixed expenses or operating income per unit. We do not need to do this, but we, we absolutely do need to do it for totals. Our fixed expenses are 60, and therefore our operating income, our income before tax is 36. And as percentages, we just state the top three items as a percentage of sales. So sales is of course 100%. Variable expenses, 144 divided by 240, 60%. And therefore our contribution margin is going to be 40%. We can just double check that, 96 divided by 240. Yes, it's 40%. Okay, so I always try to lay this out before I begin the question. And if I have this laid out in this way, and sometimes there'll be like one missing piece of information, you gotta fill in the black blanks or work backwards. But once you have this laid out, I find the math here very straightforward, particularly if I'm given a formula sheet. If you're not given a formula sheet, there's a few key formulas to memorize. So I take it as like, once you've done a few of these, you'll know sales minus variable expenses, contribution margin. The key formula outside of that is this one. Break even units is sort of like the cornerstone of the whole thing. Really focus on that one. You'll see it as you're practicing. You're going to see this over and over again. It's fixed expenses divided by CM per unit. And that's the first one we're asked for. It says calculate break even units. All right. So our break even units is fixed expenses divided by CM per unit. Our company's fixed expenses, 60,000. Our CM per unit, 12. 60,000 divided by 12, 5,000 units. So we need to sell 5,000 units to break even. Now it says calculate the break even dollars. I don't need to look back at my formula table to go well if I need 5,000 units to break even, and I sell these things for $30 each, that's $150,000 in 
sales. So my break-even sales in dollars, my break-even point in dollars is 150,000. This is a great moment. If you are starting your own business and you just sort of crunch these numbers, you know, you're roughing in the numbers, it's useful to go, do I think I can sell 5,000 units? You know, yes or no. If I can't sell 5,000 units, this is a money looser and maybe I shouldn't do it. If I can't make $150,000 in sales revenue in the first year, I'm in trouble, right? So that's something to contemplate. And, and that's why this is so useful when you're starting a business or you're planning ahead. What a useful tool to have if you're able to be honest with yourself about those estimates. Uh, C, how many units must the company sell to reach a target operating income of $50,000? Okay, so our target operating income is a hundred and no, it's it's fifty thousand, not a hundred and fifty. And we're looking at formula seven now. If you're looking for where these formulas are, they're just in my workbook, tonybell.com, and it's just at the start of the chapter. You'll see this formula list. Uh fixed expenses plus target operating income divided by CM per unit. I forget what were my fixed expenses. They were sixty. My target operating income was 50 and my CM per unit, I think was 12. Yeah. 12 was my CM per unit. So 50, 60 plus 50 divided by 12, 60,000 plus 50,000 divided by 12, 91666.666. Uh, so I need to sell 9167 units to hit that target profit. So the answer here is 9167 units. Uh, we do round up when we get a decimal answer for break even points because you can't sell 0.6 um, neckties. Even if it was like 0 0.3, 91, 0 0.333, we would round up to the next number. Even though 0.3, you normally round down. With break even, you round up. Um, okay, so let's see. How many units do I have to sell to reach a target income of $50,000? Now, again, I can say to the entrepreneur, or if I'm the entrepreneur, I can say to myself, well, I only think I'm going to sell 8,000, but I really want to sell 9,100. Is this reasonable? And the answer here maybe is yes, right? It's like, okay, I got to be 10% better than what I'm planning on. You know, I, I think I could get there theoretically. But if the answer here is, whoa, this is outrageous, you might have to treat, tweak your business plan, right? You might have to change some element of the business plan, or maybe that's a signal it's not a good business. This one, though, I, I would think, well, we're in the ballpark anyway. Let's move on to D. D says, prepare a budgeted contribution format income statement. We've kind of done a rough one. When an accounting textbook asks you to prepare an income statement, though, it's typically looking for like a three line title and proper formatting. So let's provide that. I mean, this is the information. It's right here in this middle column. We've done it. We've got all the information we need, but let's do it. Uh, play ball with the question. So a three line title, we would start with the name of our company charming clothiers then we do the name of the statement we're preparing which is a contribution format income statement or budgeted contribution format income statement and then the year end and the date so for the year ended and then the date we'll just assume it's a calendar year december 31st i'll make sure this is for a year right following information yeah it's for a year okay um so then we just go down our accounts right so it's going to be sales rev uh variable expenses now again a, a traditional income statement a conventional one would be sales minus cogs is gross profit then our operating expenses this is sales variable expenses the subtotal is not gross margin or gross profit but contribution margin minus fixed expenses equals operating income now, if we had taxes, we would go minus income tax equals net income, but this is it. Like we just stop there. So our sales, well, we have it all here. It's all these numbers, 240 for sales, 144 for variable expenses, 
uh, what is it? 96 for contribution margin, 60 for fixed expenses, and 36,000 for our operating income. Dollar signs at the top and bottom of each of these because we do want to have good formatting here. And there, we've got our answer for D on the screen. So that's what was asked for. We kind of did that in setting up the question, but here we've done it properly formatted and nobody can complain about that. Well, our professor can't complain about that if that's what we hand in. Let's do E now. Compute the margin of safety. State your answer as a percentage. All right. Safety margin budgeted sales minus break-even sales divided by budgeted sales. That's this formula here. That's our margin of safety. What is our budgeted sales? Our budgeted sales is, well, we expect to sell 8,000 units, so $240,000. So our budget sales... I'm going to do it here. Budget sales is $240,000. What about our break-even sales? We want the answer to part B, $150,000. That's how many how that's how much I have to sell to break even. So that's my break-even sales 150 and we divide by budgeted sales. So again, 240 minus 150 divided by 240. 240 minus 150 divided by 240, 0.375, and it says state that as a percentage, so 0 0.375, which is 37.5%. Okay, so that's our answer, but what the heck does it mean? 37.5% is the answer. That's our margin of safety. What does it mean? It means I can blow the budget. I can miss the budget by 37%, and I'm still breaking even. So it means it's how much wiggle room you have, right? How much room for error? <laughs> you know, we're, we're projecting the future. We can be about 37% off and we're still okay. We're still breaking even. That's what the margin of safety is. It's how much room do I have to be wrong about my sales estimates? Okay, uh, so we've gone through uh, 618 parts a, B, C, D, E. Part F asks us to compute the degree of operating leverage, and that's a confusing, tricky concept. So I'm going to pause this video here. Well, I'll stop it here, and we're going to pick up parts F and G in its own video just on operating leverage because I think it's a challenging concept. It's one that my students get wrong all the time, and I want to devote a, a longer amount of time to explain it and then to solve parts F and G. But that'll be in the next part of this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you there. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.